With all the recent backlash against presidential hopeful Donald Trump, some people argue that his chances of sitting in the Oval Office are drifting away. Tonight, we'll be witnessing the presidential candidates go head to head again in yet another debate. But here in Israel, polls are showing that the vast majority of Israelis already support Clinton. Joining us today is Nimrod Zuta. He's a founder of the Israeli Trump White and Blue social media organization, which is fighting to get more American Israelis to vote for Trump. Thanks so much for coming in. Hey, thanks. So let's talk about the debate. Let's begin this interview um, about the debate. What can we expect from Donald Trump? Well, I think we're going to be seeing the climax of what we've saw so far about the presidential debates. Um, we're going to see Trump at its finest, probably in the form that we've seen him already in the primary debates. Um, we know that he brought the mother of um, one of the victims of the Benghazi attacks to sit in the um, uh, among the crowd. We're gonna see, um, uh, I, I think, a remarkable performance by Donald Trump. That I can say that. All right. So let's turn to Israel. You know, Trump has shown support for Israel consistently, but uh, there's also been a lot of media coverage about his lack of knowledge about the Middle East as a whole. He was on the Hugh Hewitt show, and he couldn't identify the difference between Hezbollah and Hamas, just as a minor example. Now, how can Israelis truly depend on Trump to support Israel, given his lack of experience in foreign policy, or is that not an issue at all? Well, first of all, he has an experience. He, he is a fantastic, fantastically successful businessman. And this, kind of, this obviously lets you, the amount of experience that you get from trading with 100 plus countries in the world is much better than any senator, any foreign uh, minister that you can name, okay? Because his namesake is on it. He built an empire. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton destroyed empires. She destroyed uh, America's foreign relations. She's threatening to go to, uh, to an all-out war with Russia over some email hack, okay? Um, well, what are some of the specific policies that Trump, you know, is uh, advocating for here in Israel? Well, first of all, because of uh, Donald Trump's uh, advocacy, the Republican Party, for the first time in over two decades, has completely rejected from its platform um, the mentioning of a, a Palestinian state, okay, which is a big change, is an historic change. Um, this is a only because of the intervention of Mr. Trump. His advisors are really he has advisors that are um, that learned in yeshivas in uh, Judea and Samaria. Uh, his right hand is a, is a Orthodox Jew, and this is the best candidate by far for the Israeli interests that the American politics has, um, has ever had, period. Now, um, let's talk about another issue. We're going to move slightly away from Israel and talk about refugees and the status of refugees. America has always been a country of refugees, including many Jews themselves who came uh, to the country after World War II and Legally. previous. Okay. Uh, now, Trump has made threats to keep out Mexicans, uh, impose restrictions on Muslim uh, refugees. Will this change the great American tradition, in your opinion? And what do you say to Jews themselves who were refugees at one point or have family members who are refugees and are concerned about this type of divisive policy? I would like to say to the, the American Jewish voters specifically that you have to abandon the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is no longer our home. In the last uh, uh, Democratic Convention, we saw the Israeli flag was being burned outside of the convention. We saw inside more Palestinian flags than American flags. This is not uh, a, a party that a Jew can allow himself to be uh, identified with. All right, And right now, there is an, an attempt to change the fabric of America, by the, to change the, the Judeo-Christian fabric of America, the historically Judeo-Christian, which established this country, made it the most powerful country in the world, that made the Constitution uh, one of the most important documents in history. And they're trying to import voters. You know, let's be honest, those uh, illegals that come illegally uh, to the United States 
and uh, bringing and uh, bringing all the amounts of crimes that we see with them, um, they're gonna vote Democrat. Let's be honest about it. And if they would vote Republican, uh, Hillary Clinton would be the first uh, one to say, "Get them the hell out." You know, she would be the first. Now, a poll just came out here in Israel indicating that more than two-thirds of the Israeli public prefer Clinton to Trump. Now, you're fighting to get more Israeli Americans to vote for Trump. What indications do you have as far as how many people will vote for Trump here? First of all, everyone who knows a thing or two about the Israeli public, this poll is bogus, okay? This is completely... Um, people do not prefer Clinton. She's one of the most hated, hated people in Israel currently, uh, by far, okay? You just look at social media. And... Well, these are polls that are coming out, I mean, I... Yeah, and the polls are, uh, are colluded. They, they literally slip in the same bed with the Clinton campaign. We know that the, the guy who makes the polls for NBC, for example, um, he's working for Clinton. This is the, the recent email leaks. Um, he got a quarter of a million dollars salary directly from the Clinton campaign. We know that all of the polls, all of the polls, they oversample Democrats versus Republicans. They, uh, they ask way too many little um, uh, independent guys. So we know they're rigged. The polls are rigged and the emails themselves of John Podesta, he's uh, admitting himself that their internal polls show that they're in panic. So, but what are the indications do you have as far as how many people are going to end up voting for Trump from here in Israel? Um, my hope is that at least like in the last, uh, last elections in 2012, and we know from the 2000 elections that they were decided only because of a difference of 500 votes in uh, Florida, and we have about 10,000 uh, American expatriates living in Israel who are Florida residents, all right? So we can do this without a doubt, you know? All right, well, thank you so much for coming in. All right, and I guess thanks. we'll see what happens tonight. All right.